Hello everyone and welcome to the second video in this summer's genealogy series. This is the quickest and simplest video in the series all about building a family tree. Today we're going to talk about the record keeping tools available on Ancestry Library. They have a lot of templates and such that you can print and use to help keep you organized, as well as some digital tools to help you do that without having to print. Um, I'm also going to give just a quick overview of the sort of things we talked about in our last video, and I'm going to provide some resources at the end uh, in my notes. I'm putting a quick reminder here, genealogy is a very recent interest of mine. I help people do their research, but this is a learn-as-you-go sort of experience for me. So if you know better than me, I would love you to shoot me an email or leave it in the comments. That said, let's get going with building our own family trees. If you are looking for information about how to get started with finding info, the first video in the series is the way to go. However, I'm providing some of the most important tips for getting started just to keep everyone together in one place. The most important thing is to start with you. Write down everything you know about your family and organize all the documents that you have like birth and marriage records, old family records like family Bibles, and old photos that you have. Then you can talk to your oldest living relatives to fill in gaps, ask about people and important dates, and ask for their stories. You're going to get a lot of information. Um, there are charts called pedigree charts or family group records that you can use to organize everything. Uh, we'll go over that in a moment. And you will also have to start getting picky at that point. So you'll choose one line in the family to start with to avoid getting overwhelmed and disorganized. The real issue is that of organization. So let's take a quick look at the tools that are available on Ancestry Library since it's our most powerful research database and I know a lot of people like a one-stop shop. As we discussed in the last class, there are a lot of resources on Ancestry Library that go beyond just information about families. They have tools to help you learn how to use their database and message boards to connect with other people, and the most important part today, charts and forms that you can use to organize your research. I want to take a moment to briefly just go over each form that they have. The first two forms are really useful and everyone should probably have some version of them to help organize their research. I mentioned both of these in my overview and this is what they look like. This here is an ancestral chart or a pedigree chart. The pedigree chart looks like what you'll probably think of for gene genealogy documents. Um, so it's just a traditional family tree. It shows a person's immediate ancestors um, and it allows you to note that the primary person on each chart where they fit on other pages that you have. So you can have as many or as few sheets as you want for what you're focusing on. It's a quick way to see who you have info about and where you have gaps. The next is a family group record. Um, that sheet shows all the info that relates to an entire family group at once. A family group refers to a family that likely would have lived together at some point in their lives. A married couple and their children uh, and a few details about the couple's parents. So you can take notes on the couple, including all of their important dates and where they lived and their parents' names and their children's names and important dates. The rest of the forms that they have on Ancestry Library are still useful, but not nearly as important. A research calendar is a way to track what sources you have used and what information you have found in them. So whenever you sit down with a database or at a library or archive, you can write down all of the different sources you ended up searching in and whether it was useful to your research and how. A research extract is a way to keep more detailed information about the different sources that you have used. So if you see something and your notes aren't good enough or you didn't know that you would need it but now you think you do, you have a way to find the exact place and the exact source that you originally came across some concept or another. And then a correspondence record is just a way that you can track everybody who you have written to about your research, whether it's somebody in your family or somebody who has done research in your family line before. A source summary is a quick reference of the sources that you have used. 
Uh, it's the most basic details from your research extracts, but all in one place for a quick um, way to look it up. So now that we've been through these resources, you can see how thorough they are. They provide great guidelines for new researchers and tried and tested organizational methods for genealogy research. However, they also force you to maintain handwritten paper documents. And if that doesn't appeal to you, whether it's because you have bad handwriting or you worry about paper documents getting lost or damaged or any other reason, there are digital tools that can help you as well. So let's talk about some free digital tools. What are those like? If you like the style of all of the forms we just discussed from Ancestry Library, the National Genealogical Society has them too. Uh, they're slightly different, um, but basically the same thing. And they are form fillable, which means you can fill them out on a computer and save them. It would let you keep the same sorts of files that researchers have done for years, but you can have them on your computer or online. Uh, you can save them in a cloud service like Google Drive, OneDrive, or iCloud, so that if anything happens to your computer, your files are still fine. If you are a visual thinker, or if you just want to get fancy, my favorite family tree tool is called Family Echo. It's free and available at familyecho.com. It lets you build an extremely detailed family tree and share it with other people in your family who are interested in researching it. On this slide, I'm showing a simplified version of my family tree with just the first names for me and my wife, my parents and their siblings, and my grandparents. The site defaults to showing men in blue and women in pink, living people, black text, dead people, gray text, but you can alter that to look however you would like. For each person on the tree, there is a column to the left side where you can put in as many details about them as you want. Their full name, including maiden name, gender, birth date, death date, information about their partners, siblings, children, and parents, contact info, and whatever details of their life you want to include, as well as a photo if you have one. There's a lot of very dense information in this side panel, so it's worth taking a close look at it. Everything here is simple and intuitive as far as I'm concerned. You can click around between different people and add as much information about each person as you have or as you want to. You can also share it with other people. So for example, if you have an aunt or uncle who's way into family history, they can directly input the stuff that they know, or you can share it in a way that doesn't allow people to edit, but that they can look over it for you or just you can share the information. The best part about it is that it's free and it has really excellent plain language terms of service and privacy rules that you can look into. They seem good to me, um, but I am certainly not an expert. Another important tool for your research is a site called archives.gov. They have tons of records and resources and they also have a lot of educational material. So if you're stuck, they probably have advice. They also have a YouTube channel. If you're watching this, I'm gonna hazard a guess that you like video education content. So if you check out their YouTube, you can learn way more about how to do research and the details of different kinds of records that you can use in your research. And really, that's it for today. This is a short one because I have a simple purpose. I just wanna drive home the importance of organization and the fact that there's absolutely no reason to start from zero. There are a lot of tools available and information to access. You just need to get out there and grab it all so that you can get yourself organized. Here is a page of important links, which will be available in the description box for the National Genealogical Society, Ancestry Library, Genealogy Bank, and some additional family tree tools if you don't like Family Echo. If you want to learn more, we have a video on genealogy basics already available on this channel. There's also one more video coming out this summer on July 20th or so about how to preserve your information and documents. If you have questions about anything we've discussed, there are Q&A sessions on July 20th and 27th at 6 p.m. And if you are interested in sharing the stories that you find, I'm booking oral history appointments the first week in August. You can write up what you find to post to our website or podcast feed, and we'll be saving them in the archive for future researchers. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.